the Right Side Network, bringing you the right news for the new right. I'm Jim Hole, and I am your voice. Thank you and good evening. Welcome to a special weekend edition of The Whole Report. And tonight, I have a very important topic to discuss. It is a matter of freedom. It is a matter of democracy. It is a matter of the future of our country. Tonight, folks, the topic is the matter of us, our millennial generation. You know, from the very beginning uh, outset of discussions involving the planning of our network, our number one goal and mission was to give a platform to those of us who have been left out of the mainstream for the last eight years or so. Conservative millennials. Conservative millennials have uh, always been seen as a threat to the left. Uh, you know, we do not fit their mold. Uh, millennials, by a large part in their mind, for whatever reason, aren't supposed to be conservative. But, uh, you know, needless to say, we do exist. Okay? So, uh, all you liberals out there, there are indeed conservative millennials. You're looking at one right now. But, that wasn't the only part of it, though. Uh, you know, as much as a threat as we were to the left, you know, we were also increasingly isolated by the Republican establishment. You know, we were ostracized for our increasingly libertarian views on a vast majority of social issues. You know, in, in as far as the mainstream was considered, we were almost considered to be a pariah. Uh, you know, uh, we were mortified by the increasingly radical and intolerant leftist ideology that was being spewed from the Democrats. And we we're outraged by the blatant refusal of the, by the Republican Party to change or reform anything, which resulted in them losing multiple elections. So, you know, things weren't looking good for us. You know, we were pretty much an outlier. I had left the Republican Party in 2012 after the outrageous campaign ran by Mitt Romney. Uh, you know, uh, that was one time where I went to the polls uh, casting a vote that I just knew he was going to lose. Uh, the man disappeared for the last month and a half of his campaign. I, I don't know where the hell he went. I don't know what the heck he was thinking. But from that point forward, I didn't belong to a party, essentially. I mean, I still voted Republican for, you know, local government, state, and all that. But from 2012 onward, I did not consider myself a card-carrying member of the Republican Party whatsoever. But enough was enough until one famous escalator ride down to the lobby of Trump Tower ignited a movement and changed everything in the course of history in America. However, our movement wasn't the only one taking hold of the American millennial generation, and that's what I'm here to discuss tonight. Our generation, us, the people who in the next 10 to 20 years will rule this country, the millennial generation. The vast majority... See, the thing about millennials is we were put at a disadvantage. Um, a lot of what we see today is, is not entirely millennials' faults. Uh, we were hit particularly hard by the Great Recession. Uh, I happened to start college right around the time the Great Recession hit. Uh, our family never fully recovered from that. Um, I lost a lot of money for a lot of stupid reasons. Why a lot of people got rich. And uh, that was probably the first, first step towards me awakening to the fact that the system is indeed rigged folks. 
the system is rigged for the rich. Now, most millennials don't understand this. Uh, the wool has been pulled over their eyes to blind them from the truth. Uh, their mind is in a prison. Um, and to them, I say to you know, to them I say this: uh, this is your last chance. You know, there's a line that uh, us members of the new right tend to use, and uh, if uh, if you're a millennial and you've never seen The Matrix, well, um, I don't know where you've been, but uh, the red pill and the blue pill. You take the blue pill, and the story ends here, and you would believe whatever you want to believe, and you keep on going about your life asleep. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I'll show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. And what I offer you is the truth. So like I was saying, millennials, where did we go wrong? Well, like I said, the majority of them are asleep. You know, it's not all their fault. You know, they, they were pretty much indoctrinated by a radical leftist ideology from a young age and and really uh on college campuses everywhere uh is just like something you'd see out of the so it, it, it's the, the college campus in the united states has become something like out of out of the soviet union i, I mean it's it is so far be it is beyond beyond anything that is acceptable in, in, in an institution that receives tax dollars. I, I mean, you might as well be sending your kids to, to the DNC to go to college. I, I, that's how ridiculous it is. I mean, seriously, it's, it's outrageous. You know, um, you know, millennials, it, it, I'm 26. So the first time I voted was 2008. Uh, that was Obama when he first ran. I voted for McCain. I didn't feel particularly good about that vote. Um, I wasn't too thrilled with him, but I thought that he'd be better than Obama. It turned, I, I mean, I knew he wasn't going to win anyway, so, you know, Obama blew him out of the water. But um, what Obama did, to his credit, and, uh, you know, he had, a, he, had a good, he had a good team with him for this. Uh, you know, he capitalized on uh, millennials through uh, tech-savvy tech, tech people and uh, people who used social media to their benefit back then. Now, the Internet wasn't quite as, ad as advanced as it is today. However, um, he took advantage of YouTube and he took advantage of, uh, you know, Facebook and Twitter at the time. And, I mean, my God, I don't, I don't even know that John McCain knew what a Facebook was. I don't think John McCain ever used a computer. So when you, when you, when you have that to your advantage alone, it, it just, it's, it, it's almost like you're already, you've already got a head start. You know, so, um, so the left kind of took hold of millennials. You know, uh, Obama was popular. Uh, you know, why not? He was a fresh face. He, you know, the Democrat Party was, was, you know, re, re, reawakened, uh, you know, uh, after, uh, what amounted to be a, a horrible second term for George W. Bush. Um, you know, anything short of a, a victory for the Democrats w would have been a, an abomination. So, I mean, they threw Obama out there. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, he um, he is a masterful speaker. I'll give him that, and he won. And uh, in doing so, he won over a vast majority of the millennial uh, population. But that's when things started to go wrong. Uh, they became indoctrinated by an evil and intolerant leftist ideology. They became emboldened by their social justice warrior BS and their safe spaces and 
you know, college campuses and, you know, no free speech, you know, it, you know, no free speech and, you know, oh, hurt feelings and participation trophies and, you know, whatnot. You know, I, I mean, my God, it's our, our generation, our millennial generation has become the softest generation ever. I mean, the college campus is rapidly deteriorating into something, some, like I said, something out of the Soviet Union. Something, not, something out of Nazi Germany is, is what is the college campus in the United States has become. And, and, that's, and that's scary, folks. I mean, that's scary. I mean, we're better than this. You know, sadly, the majority, you know, they need their safe, you know, the majority of it, sadly, the majority of millennials need their safe spaces. They believe, they believe in the mainstream media. They believe in, in you know, the mainstream media and CNN and MSNBC and all their on-air talent with the seven-figure salaries and the blatant liberal agenda openly colluding with the Clinton campaign, you know, it's okay, it's okay for, you know, the progressive millennial left to, you know, believe war is okay as long as, you know, a Democrat is president, you know, I mean, don't be fooled, folks, uh, you know, I, I know you think that Obama was your knight in shining armor, but, uh, you know, there was still a war going on long after Bush left office. It was just a covert war. Obama droned tens of thousands of... He dropped tens of thousands of bombs and droned thousands of innocent people. I, I mean, you, you could look it up. I mean, it's... You know, this isn't a conspiracy theory either. You know, literally, there was a covert war going on for the last eight years. You just They, they just never reported it, you know. You know, it's funny how that works. You know, it, it, Trump sneezes and it makes national news. But, you know, Obama drones a village in Pakistan and kills, you know, six kids. But that doesn't that doesn't get any attention at all. You know, and and, and just, you know, the 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 radical left and the, the PC bullshit and the fake feminism and, you know, Oh, they're going to go protest Donald Trump, and he's so mean to women, but, you know, what? where were they protesting, you know, how S Hillary Clinton for taking millions of dollars from Saudi Arabia? You know, a country where a woman can be killed if she's raped, and, and if she can't find three witnesses to back her up, because you have to have three witnesses, and, and they're governed by Sharia. You know, you know, where where were the women protesting that? Wait, where are the women protesting the the sex trafficking going on in the United States? I uh, I mean, it goes on. You know, where where's the where are all the women protesting? You know, when when anywhere in in China, uh, you know, a female a female baby's killed. It doesn't make any sense. These people are crazy. I mean, they're out of their damn minds. You know, they think they think that that it's okay to go protest because Donald Trump said mean things. But you know, I I, I dare you to go walk walk down up and down the streets in Saudi Arabia and and protest protest over there for uh, real women's rights and see what happens. Because it won't turn out good. You know, and you, you got, you know, Black Lives Matter, which, okay, you know, that, the, it, it was, it's an organization based on a lie. Black Lives Matter is an organization based on a lie. The hands up, don't shoot, never happened. It was proven by the Obama Justice Department. It, it, are there are there certain things that Black Lives Matter does to to benefit the black community? Maybe. You know, it, it's an it, it's an organization that was unfortunately corrupted from the very beginning and got turned into an arm of the American Communist Party. You know, and and goes and starts riots and and you know tries to 
you know, block traffic for an hour and, and to throw a, throw a temper tantrum. I, you know, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. And, and worst of all probably is the fact that the majority of millennials still believe in the two-party dichotomy. You know, uh, it, there, there is, there really is no difference be between the two parties, really, in all, in all sincerity. Um, one has a D after his name, and the other has an R, and in a normal circumstance, they're both funded by the same people, they're both taking orders from Wall Street, you know, they're not, they're not, they're not working for you, the American people. They're working for themselves, and they're working for the bankers. And that's who they're serving. You know, for, for about the last 50 years in the United States, there really has been no auto, autonomous leadership. Um, it, it has all been controlled leadership. Um, controlled by the globalists. It, it, globalism. You know, a bunch of multi multinational, multi ethnic corporations that that just pretty much want cheap labor and open borders and and they want to destroy the sovereignty of the United States. And when I say globalism, don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about the black helicopters and, you know, detention camps like Alex Jones, but there there really is true globalism in the world and it is it is a it is a danger to our democracy it's a danger to freedom and it needs to be stopped i mean look look what look at what it's done to this country you know donald trump you know part of the one of the main reasons he got elected was was because of globalism just rampage through our nation you know, look, when, when Bill Clinton signed NAFTA, that turned out to be one of the worst trade deals in the history of trade deals. And there aren't, there aren't any good ones either. You know, NAFTA wound up losing more jobs than creating jobs. It closed our, it closed our factories. It, it decimated our auto industry. Our manufacturing, gone. In, in, a, in, less, in less than 20 years. That's unheard of, and that's wrong. You know, people just don't seem to understand it, and they're not awake to it, but it's, it, it's true, folks. I mean, I'm telling you the truth. I mean, you know me. I give you my opinion. You don't, you might, you don't agree with it, that's fine. But, you know, I'm telling you the truth. You know, so... The two-party dichotomy is a bunch of BS. I mean, until Donald Trump came along, really, and, and I mean this sincerely. I'm, you know, I'm not just saying this, you know, because I'm biased. But he is the probably the first autonomous leader, prob probably since JFK. I, I, I think. I mean, y you know, he doesn't answer to anyone. Donald Trump doesn't he he doesn't owe anyone any favors. So he is leading by himself. Now it scares a lot of people. I don't understand why. I, you know, I think a lot of that has to do with the fake news, uh, you know, which by the way, I'm going to get into in a minute, but that's a whole nother I I could make a whole show dedicated to that, but I digress. But it, but act, you know, but if you're watching this right now, you, you're probably aware of how screwed up the world is. Um, if you're watching me, you're most likely conservative, um, not neoconservative, but but conservative, uh, possibly libertarian, uh, maybe you're alt right or new right like myself, um, civic nationalist. Um, hopefully not white nationalists. We're not. We're not a bunch of racists, despite what CNN says. Um, I, I consider myself to be a civic nationalist. I, I think that civic nationalism is important. Uh, you might. You might be a Bernie fan. I, I don't know. Um, some Bernie fans 
turn Trump supporters. Um, you know, you you could be uh, real. You you could be on the far left, not not neo-lib neoliberal, but you know, you could be on the liberal side of things. Um, you know, as long as you're not one of those, you know, PCBS want to throw anyone in jail who offends them and. You know, social justice is great, and globalism is great, and Islam is wonderful and peaceful, and we want open borders and let everyone in. So, you know, but in the next 10 to 20 years, it'll be our generation running this country. And, and to me, right now, that's scary. However, there is room for hope. There's been an awakening in the the uh, conservative millennial uh, youth. Uh, more of us supported Trump than you think. Uh, I know quite a few people who uh, all along said they weren't going to vote for him, and uh, what do you know? Come election day, they uh, uh, you know who you are, but. Uh, you know, it's okay, you're with friends, uh, you, you know, you, you could admit it to yourself at night who you voted for, but, you know, I, I, know you are, I know you're out there, there was plenty of you, there, there was plenty of you, you just didn't want to admit it, I, I mean, I had no problem admitting it, I, I, I know the guy's not racist, I know he's not, you know, he's not sexist or racist or misog misogynistic or what, you know, I mean, certainly he is no saint, and that is that much is clear, but you know, um, I'm you know he's being elected president. You know he's not being elected pope. So, you know let's let's give him a little credit here, folks. He's um, he's doing a pretty darn good job considering he's only been in office for uh, about two months. You know, but more more of us. So more of us millennials supported Donald Trump than you think. You know, uh, we are a, a rebellious, youthful, conservative movement. We are fighting the intolerant PC left and globalism. And you know, as as and as more of us awaken, they'll realize that that yes, the world is a screwed up place, and and yes, the vast majority of our government is corrupt and. And the globalism is a massive failure, and it is a drain on the U.S. economy, and and threatens the sovereignty of the U.S. You know, and it's a good thing that more of you are waking up. You know, people need to be woken up. They they need to know what's going on in the world. This is important stuff. You know, this is real important. You, you know, uh, we have, you know, like I was saying earlier, we we have not had a real you know, Ronald Reagan was probably the last, you know, decent president we had. Um, you know, uh, he was at least he was yeah he was truly acceptable. He he was he was good at what he you know, he was a good president. <clears throat> you know, but after that, George H. W. Bush, one termer, uh, who was pretty much done in for due to a uh, extremely sharp but thankfully short recession um, Bill Clinton uh, he had a good time and he had a good time in the White House um, he uh, did not have sex with that woman but but uh, he had a good time in the White House at least um, he, he was just he was just should be thankful that he was president during the dot-com boom but, uh, you know, he didn't, he signed a, you know, I, I, like I was talking about the other night, uh, he signed NAFTA, which was uh, probably the worst trade deal in the history of trade deals, um, signed a crime bill that uh, threw thousands of uh, black fathers into jail, leaving, uh, leaving black youth to be, you know, pretty much to be raised by the state, you know, for, you know, Thousands of uh, African Americans thrown in jail for petty offenses, such as you know smoking weed or selling dr you know selling drugs occasionally. But you know, and you know, we're talking like 20, 30 year sentences. You know, and Bill and, and the Clintons are, are the champions. Of African Americans, give me a break. 
I mean, my God. You know, I think Donald was right. I mean, what did they have to lose? And, you know, for so long, for so long, the African-American community has been taken advantage of by the Democrat Party. Completely taken advantage of. I mean, you know, it's true. You know, they, they, they tell them to go vote, and then it's, I'll see you in four years. And, and in the meantime, they've decimated their communities and destroyed their dreams. And, and it's not right. You know, it's, 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 not, it's not right. The, the failed policies of, of, of the liberals and the Democrats that have controlled these cities for, for 50 years, 50, 60, even 100 years. Look, I mean, look at Chicago. I mean, every every night it's like a war zone in Chicago. They, they, they were interviewing uh, a guy uh, who was a rep who was who reported from from Baghdad and Iraq, and he's more afraid to be in Chicago, parts of Chicago at night, than he was in Iraq. I mean, how is that possible in the United States of America? I mean, you know, it, and that that leads to you know. The, the divided nation that, that, that Obama left us with. You, you know, uh, Obama, you know, he was still at war. We were still at war when he was president. It was just a silent war, but still, nonetheless, Obamacare turned out to be a mitigated disaster. You know, it, it's, you know, no, he was not the worst president in the history of, of, of our democracy, but he wasn't, he wasn't very good. You know, and in the meantime, globalism and its multinational, multi-billion dollar companies essentially run the country up until now. And, and this is what really, really got me to believe that this was for real. Our, our movement... Our movement was for real. I, I had never seen in my life, and I'm not that old, but I, I've seen elections and I've seen, you know, campaigns, but, and, and I've seen the media. I have never seen the globalists so scared as they were of Donald Trump. It, and it, to, to the extent that they, were, they banked everything on Hillary patronizing neoliberal war hawk, you know, the media bias, the fake news, the, the disrespect, the cheerleading for Hillary, the, you know, they were so arrogant, they didn't even care how blatant it was or how it looked to the average American. I mean, I saw that every night and I was amazed by it and I obviously wasn't the only one. But when you waste over a billion dollars trying to get that woman elected, and you fail, you know, my, like my brother always says, the hypocrisy of the left never ceases to amaze me. And they deserved it. They deserved it. You know, it's funny, I was talking to a friend of mine last night about this. He said that for the first, and, and this is true, for the first time in the history of our of our nation, we we could have had a a a self-proclaimed socialist as president of this country. A self socialist could have been president. And you know what? Thank God they rigged the primary for Hillary because uh, you know I don't know. Uh, there's a chance that Bernie could have won because the states the the Rust Belt states Trump wound up winning. Bernie won those in the primary, so you know. I guess we should thank the the Democrat Party for uh, handing us that election. Uh, you know, I, I I don't know. I mean, Trump Trump very well could have beaten Bernie, but you know, who knows? I mean, we won't we won't know. You know, that's just one of those things we'll we'll never know. But. But to, to that effect, you know, you know, it's just all of it leading up, culminating in the election of Donald Trump, which gives me, it gives me new hope 
for our millennial generation. You know, that, that we're all not just a bunch of lightweight candy asses who think we're entitled to a participation trophy even though we didn't win and this social justice warrior nonsense and you know protesting if you know something you know protesting for some BS stuff that doesn't even make any sense you know the majority of these people protesting Donald Trump they don't even know what they're protesting I mean, seriously, if you go out on the street and you ask, they don't even know what the hell they're protesting for, and some of them are getting paid to do it. And don't let don't let CNN or MSNBC lie, because because they are getting paid. They're getting paid by George Soros. It's all it's all it's all there. You know, it, there's about a thousand different packs that 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 bus people around state to state and bus them to the Capitol. They have pre-made signs. They go protest and, you know, throw, and, and, and then you get the Antifa people and they start chucking rocks at police and starting riots and breaking shit. And, you know, one, you know, one, one final thought, and uh, this is scary, uh, th and there's a lot of these people that are really scary. You know, they had one on the other night, and this woman, um... You know, these Antifa people, they, they, they want to literally throw Donald Trump out of the White House. They, they want to throw a duly elected president out of the White House. How the hell are you going to do that? Are you just, are you just gonna like you know walk right up up to the you know the front door of the White House and drag him out? I I don't think so. Uh, you know, they they have Democrats already talking about impeachment. They're, they're they're talking about impeachment of the president of the United States two months into his term when he hasn't done any he hasn't done anything wrong. Nothing he has done is unconstitutional. I mean, he has not done anything illegal or unconstitutional. It's just not true. Uh, I it, he. Yeah, he, uh, the court case, uh, do, uh, well, the Muslim, but well, it's not a Muslim ban, all right, CNN can call it a Muslim ban all, all at once, it's a travel ban, uh, it had nothing to do with religion, it had to do with countries specified by the Obama administration that were known to harbor terrorists, you know, so, but, but that, that still wasn't unconstitutional. Uh, it, it, nothing Donald Trump has done has been unconstitutional, and, and nothing he's done has warranted uh, any sort of impeachment hearings. In fact, uh, it, it would take the Republican Party to, to try to do that, and for, it, if they tried, they would be pretty much, it, it, it would be, they would be blowing up their own party. Uh, you know, a, a third to half the Republican Party would be in open revolt if if they even tried something that stupid. So I'm sorry to tell you, uh, liberals, uh, uh, Trump's not getting impeached. Um, you know, you could keep wishing, uh, you could keep fishing for the moon and the water, but uh, Donald Trump's not getting impeached. He's here to stay. Get used to it. We got used to Obama. We made it through eight years. Barely, but we made it. You'll get used to Trump. And come on, he's going to make America great again, you know? I, you know? Give him a chance. And as far as my millennial generation goes, I hope you do wake up. I hope you do wake up, and I hope you join the fight. Join the fight to save this country. Join the fight to make it great again. Join our fight to open the eyes of every American so they can see for themselves the corruption that goes on in this nation. That our elected leaders are not, are not really in it for us, they're in it for themselves and they're in it for anyone that they can get rich off of. I mean, look at Wall Street. I mean, they donate most of the money to all the political campaigns, Goldman Sachs, you know, banks, you name it. They want a favor, they got it. That's how it's been in D.C. for a long time. 
And with Trump's election, I hope that's going to start to come to an end. Anyway, I, uh, I think that does it for the, tonight's report. Uh, I appreciate you all listening. Uh, we will have to do this again, and we will be doing this again. I'm Jim Hall for the Right Side Network, where we bring you the right news for the new right. Thank you, and good night.